Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Raising Star Seeds. We are joined today with Peter Slattery. How are you doing, Peter? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yay. Yes, Peter's joining us all the way from Australia. So unfortunately, with all the borders closed down, this is the closest we get to with our international brothers and sisters. Um, but Peter is an, is an international author, and he is a multidimensional healer, intuitive, and you recently published and brought out a new movie, a documentary movie called Multidimensional. So what would you love to share? I was able to watch that with my 10 year old daughter. She absolutely loved it. So what would you, what inspired you to bring that information out? It was a series of synchronicities of, uh, well, James Gilliland, who's in the film, as well as John Vivanco and Jason Gleaves. It was just in a series of conversations. They were like, you should just do your own movie. Uh, there's been opportunities in the past, but after they said it a few times, I've done James's contact has begun too. So I, I did that for James. I've done a series of, well, not a series, but a few other documentaries in the past. And I don't even consider myself a filmmaker. It's just, you know, I've been able to whack it together. And then this was uh, something that I thought I'd give a bit of a go at, sort of get some, uh, we could say, insight from other people that know me and about my story and wham together sort of some of the best information and evidence which isn't it's a very small percentage of what i was able to put into that film because there is so much to present that maybe in future there'll be a part two and part three as well to elaborate on that film but it was something where i wanted to present my case to the world with the best evidence some insight from researchers and experiences as well like mary rodwell uh, Jason Gleaves, who's ex-UK Air Force Aerospace, who's analysed the footage, and James Gilliland, John Vivanco, the remote viewer. And uh, something that was also uh, on my mind with doing it, that's able to be watched by anyone, whether they're in the, into this field, whether they're into the topic or not, it's just something I wanted to sort of put together that's digestible mm -hmm. for the average person mm -hmm. and not go too far out because I could have, you know, I could go really far out with it, but I wanted to make it digestible. So that was the main sort of uh, framework around that film. Yeah, I, I, I would say it is, it's very easily digestible, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and it brings in, I think it's a really nice balance between countering the speaking of the film, you know, of your personal testimonies, and then showing the evidence as well. So, right. But I, yeah. I'm not, I found it very interesting, Peter, um, you know, the, the scrolling, the end credit scenes, all your names are biblical. I find that, you know, Peter, Mary, <laughs> yeah. um, and James, That's right. I, I just, you know, I, I, I actually, I screenshot it and I sent it to James Gill and yesterday and I said, look at all these biblical names of you guys coming together and the hopes of showing people who we really are, our true selves and going in with our higher self. Yeah, it's something that we allude to in that film as well. We don't go super deep, but it had to be looked at because that's where everything leads to. So many researchers or experiences, and I find a lot of researchers are experiences, which is why they're researching it. Mm -hmm. They've had experiences and then later in life, it's eventually led to the conscious aspect. And so that's where we're wanting to lead with it because that's what it's about. It's not looking up to these extraterrestrials. It's not uh, looking for saviors, but seeing what we are as, we could say, souls and cells of God's body, what we're all capable of, and that even an extraterrestrial experience as incarnated into one of those beings or into one of those star nations, it's just an experience. And this sort of blows a lot of people's mind that are in this community. They think, they think they're something. They think they're a Pleiadian. They think they're an Orion. But what it leads to is that they're just an experience. You may resonate with certain star systems. And that's because you've been there multiple times. You've done a few journeys there. And you carry those frequencies within your soul. So I try to, I try to push and open people up more and more going, all right, you're a star seed. But do you understand that that's just an experience, that you've been this, you've been that, you've done this, and that there's realms we could say pl places that we've been, that there's no planets and stars, that it's, it gets even more convoluted and crazy the more that you go up in frequencies up to the, what I call the celestial, the angelic kingdom. And 
is trying to put that in a way that's just digestible. It's simple and it shouldn't be complicated, but the process is convoluted. But once you get it, you start to see, all right, you've got to take the linear aspect out of it. Where we think things are linear, it's black, white, yes, no, this option, that option. We've got to look at things 360 degree unboundedly to start actually getting somewhere with this, which is hard because we could say the way that humans are manipulated in a process of thousands of years, we're sort of in a process where we're not at our full capability. And you are speaking before this, Abby, about the, uh, about the DNA. And this is where we've been, we could say programmed because I see this as a biological computer that our soul is a software and that's plugged into the unified field, God source creator, which we could say is a wireless internet. There's a process here, but once this, these, the human body can open up more and more, we'll start to see really the true capability of what we are and what we can do, which is quite amazing. So much technology has been hidden from us and suppressed from us. And, you know, what I appreciate with, with your film, like multidimensional is everything, how it was delivered, but also those gentle reminders, like it's all right there. We have it. It's just up to you to connect to source. Cause really it's us as individual journey to get there. I think some people are just waiting for an ET experience and then having them, you know, it's, it's about us opening ourselves up to it, you know, being ready for it as a collective. It is. I find, and like now it's not to gloat or anything, but I've spoke to a few thousand people over, we could say 11 year period about this and their experiences. And it's twofold what's going on where you've got an aspect and it's not out of ego for the experience or anything, but the experiences really are about them. It's very individual and it's about who they are, what they're capable of, and it really comes back to them. But then you've got the flip side that once you've got that knowledge, which is, I feel, ongoing, that knowing that and implementing that in a boots on the ground way, you start to see how and why you're here to assist here. So the contact experiences are about you, but then it's how to help here. And then you've got a flip side of the experiences where it's not just doing it individually, but now for small groups and communities, now taking it to group contact, yeah. which is a twofold thing. And that's where the years that I've been doing, they, they call it C5, but it's really just connecting with those that are open to connect and making sure that they've got positive energies and the reasons why they're doing it as, as well as us. But it's something where I find a lot of people that already experiences, but they haven't had contact with other people around or they are new to it and or they had experiences with C5 groups or as a group, but they, it's like not happening for them yet by themselves. And sometimes there's a bit of this, I want the experience, but stop only the way I want it or I want to control the situation because that's one of the hard things is really surrendering to the experiences and also knowing how to combat negative influences and things like that, which I had a bit of a head, uh, uh, we could say I was sort of well acquainted with that somewhat because I'll, before I was known for this, I'm the guy that you'd call to some of the most haunted places in Australia to go and investigate and help people out. And I found even with that, that some people that thought they were having ET contact, they actually lived in a haunted place, whether it was residual or intelligent hauntings. And some people that thought that I had a haunted house, it was actually ET contact going on because there's very much a lot of overlaps with how these beings can manifest what they can do, some of the tricks that they can play, some of them are tricksters, of course. And uh, I think this is where it's all starting to come together. And I'm seeing this across all fields that people that will specialize in certain areas are now investigating and looking into other areas because there's this overlap, which again, it's opening us up. It's not keeping us in a linear way. Yes. It's multidimensional. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, I think this is kind of what brought Heidi and I to, to start this channel for Raising Starseeds because these kids that are coming in, they are wide open. You know, they're, they haven't been programmed per se yet into this. So the experiences that they're having and the, and the memory recall that they're having is coming from a pure source place. Um, you know, for, for instance, um, you know, I do sky watches in my home and the majority of the time I'm doing it with my kids because I, I literally wait until, like this guy tells me when I need to go out and look up and you know, they, they, they call you out. And 
what is, is really interesting with, with my children is one evening, they, again, they, like this guy screamed at me, you need to come out, like we're all here. So we are up on my rooftop and just these, these craft are going boom, boom, but they're all coming from one place. So there was some type of a portal that had opened and they were coming out. And um, my son and I stopped pounding after 19. Like they were just, just shooting out. But what was interesting was they were going in very specific strategic spots. Now we were out there opening. I was just having fun pounding and watching. My son was starting to telepathically connect with mm -hmm. one of the craft and he heard their language and he heard one speaking. And so through that, you know, we, we, he wrote down the, the language, I, I mean, as close phonetically as we could to ours. And he said, mom, these are military like commands in regards to be like, you know, two clicks left, two clicks to the east. So like they were those type of coordinates that they were saying. So what, he and I did together was we found one of the craft was very interactive with us. So we were asking it essentially yes and no questions. So we repeated back, when you say this, does this mean north? And it would wiggle like this way, yes, or this way, no. And so we were interpreting their language through that and we were just watching these craft. So these these kids, because they're going up and they're just so more open, they are connecting telepathically with them where some of us you know we're still in an observant <laughs> observation mode yeah and that's what's going on with myself a lot of the time that when i'm filming the craft i'm actually on the craft mm -hmm. through my mind's eye or there's a merge of consciousness some of them will be using consciousness assisted technologies other than are just doing it through their we could say their advanced capabilities in their form of just doing it purely through thought what i call thought projection mm -hmm. so I don't talk about that much, but that's how a lot of the contact's happening where even if it's physically or non-physically, I'm getting imagery projected and it's like flashes, like a movie on, on fast forward, extremely quick. I'm getting what I call thought transfer to that information, which is the information pertaining to the visuals as well as feelings and emotions added in with that. And I can project the thought back. So when it's, it's basically two way of projecting a thought, what thoughts, feelings, visions come back. And that's what's happening a lot. And the kids, I, I think what happens is there's, there's a few scenarios here. Again, not, not everything's black or white, yes or no, but we find that, like I find, and especially working with a lot of children over the years, now I've backed off a lot until they're, I, I think unless it's an extreme case, I prefer them coming to me, people coming to me when they've, they're starting to hit being an adult. Mm -hmm. Because that way there's no influence, they're doing it off their own back. A lot of the times, parents are trying to get children to see me and they're, they're pushing the child into that and I won't do it because I know, I know that's what's going on. And that's where very young children, they're, they're open. They haven't been what we could say indoctrinated yet into education and control system. It's like when you go to school, you're told what to do. You're told when you can go to the toilet. You're told when you go home. This is the start of the breakdown of them being open already. And this is why there needs to be a change with the education system, which Mary's are very much onto as well, Mary Rodwell. And so because they're open, this is sort of like a, a normal thing, but they don't, it's sort of like, who do you talk to? Who you don't, who don't you talk to? Mm -hmm. And that's where even that's a form of even shutting down because they're in a world that unfortunately a lot of people would think that they're mentally ill or they're crazy or it's their crazy imaginary friend like it was for me. Even in adult years, people thought that. Mm -hmm. until they mm -hmm. see one of the bangs or the crafts with me. So, it, it, and then what you've got is that process as they get older, there's a few things that can, or a couple of things that happen and more where they'll either continue on that journey. And I see that repeatedly with a lot of children. They know how to deal with it. They know who to talk to, who not to, or they shut down and then something later in life and experience activates and opens them up again. And I think, there isn't a right or wrong way with this. I think even when they're shut down, it's programmed that way on a soul level that, all right, you're going to know that something's not right. You're going to go through life doing this, this, and this. And then when you get to this stage, we're going to pop back in and we're going to work with you. And that sort of is like a, a second awakening phase, we could say. So it's, it's very, very layered in terms of when it's coming to the children and, and raising star seeds. What I try to say is, you just be support and a buffer for them. Also no clearing techniques and things like that because a lot of these beings, they don't see us as humans. They know we're having a human experience. 
but they see your light body and everything structured from light at the extremities of their very enlightened all the way down to what, we, what I call the lower light. So you've got beings of the light and then the lower light, that are void of light and a distorted form of awareness, which are creators of the AI. They're, they're working with this sort of network, which is iconic, demonic, reptilian, various entities within it, that at the extremities of both ends, they see your light. And so it's almost like a moth to the flame when there's attacks or there's repeatedly negative dreams or negative night traumas and, and things like that, that this is where the parents need to be able to, again, not lead on, but hold space, know how to clear. And if so, and they feel the child's right for it, show them some clearing techniques or prayers that can assist them to be their own master, even though they're very young, it's something where the parent can't always protect them, especially in a sleeping situation, that they learn some tips and tools there because what they're trying to do is shut that light down. They're trying to diminish that light because they don't want another soul waking up that's contributing to the awakening here. So it's very a big balancing act. Very much so. My, my son, I, I reactivated myself with my son because when he was very young, was going through the night terror stuff. And it was quite frightening. And now, you know, when I look back, there were a lot of elements in our life that amplified it, made it even more worse. But I had such experiences as a child, and then I have mind wipes. I have total memory loss of a lot of things, and I had a little quiet era. But once my kids came in, I was reactivated, and I learned how to clear myself. I learned, taught him how to clear his room. It just, now I'm like, it's my mission. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, this is what I got to do. <laughs> this is all about the kids. And, and Abby and I connected too, because normalizing the paranormal, I'm tired of the fear base behind this. Like this is such a beautiful experience, having knowing and trusting there are multidimensional beings around. And I was honored to have a mom that was like that in Pacific Northwest. I had Sasquatch experience, you know, it could have been quite terrifying for a kid, but my mom's like, cool. What do you say? You know, like normalize it. And I'm really trying to do that with the kids now, but I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's a hard thing too, because I've worked a lot uh, behind the scenes talking to people with Hollywood and, and opportunities with my own show and things like that. And it's like, look, I want control not to be in control, like a controlling person, but I want the evidence to be real. And I don't want this to be fear-based anymore because it seems that the fear-based stuff is what gets the attention. It's what gets the views. But if you tell it exactly how it is, it's already so fantastical that it's already entertaining, but yet educational at the same time. And I think just for so many years, the negative's just been the form of entertainment for so many people. Yeah, people are programmed with that. And I have to thank you for the daytime footage you have. You're one of the only ones I've seen that have daytime footage of crafts and you know those experiences. That fascinated my kids. They were just like, Oh, okay. It's not just a, a light in the sky. I'm like seeing the shape and the form and this, you know, it was, it's really cool. And that happens to you often in daytime over there. Yeah. You well, as you can see on the YouTube, I think in the last two or three weeks I've, I've been able to film, uh, there, mm -hmm. there was twice uh, that I've had communication with them and went out and they were there. So it's a regular thing. It comes and goes, I would say that only a very small amount of stuff am I even able to film. So it's just, yeah, I happen to get daytime, nighttime stuff in the house. It doesn't matter where I am, what country I'm in or what time it is. It's, it's happening when it happens. I, I tend to think that some people, they're aware that something's around during the day, but they can't physically see it. So many people have been with me and they can't see the craft. Sometimes I can if it's extremely low, which you can see with some of the sorts of footage. But the problem with that, I'm trying to zoom up and it's even more shaky because I'm trying to get detail as much as I can. So you've got to be more accurate. And a lot of the time I'm not using a tripod because the last thing you've got time to do is go and get a tripod. You just got a camera, you're trying to capture it. But um, yeah, it's, it's a regular thing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's on, been ongoing for many years now as well. I was, I was actually afraid last week that if there was a cop nearby, he was probably going to pull me over for uh, drunken, a drunken while driving because there was a craft in the sky in the middle of the day that I was watching. And I just like kept looking over and my car was swerving. <laughs> but yeah, you, I mean, even during the day, you can, you can feel them. And, and oftentimes for, for myself, they, they literally say, look up, look up, look up. Yeah. And yeah, and they're just, they're just right there. 
a lot of it will look like a, uh, it will be similar to a star or it will be like a black dot, which would be the shadow of the hole underneath the craft as well. Mm -hmm. So there's the two things. Look for something that's up there that's bright or it's sparkling or uh, something that's reflective or that shadow type effect. It just depends on the angle where the sun is, all those types of things. But a lot of the time people will be with me, they can't see it, but they can see it on camera. They can see it when they're looking at the camera viewfinder, they can see it and then they look back up and then they can see it. Because now they know what to look for. I think people are thinking that contact a lot of the time is something that it's not. And whether it's, it could be due to the crafts being up high, it could be a type of craft or an object in the sky that they weren't expecting that they didn't think extraterrestrial crafts would look like that. Or a lot of the time, it's just beings in their light body, their Merkaba, which is their light vehicle. It's not an actual craft, it's their essence. It's what they are. So... Uh, yeah, there's, there's different components. Some people can't see great long distance. So, you know, again, it's that thing where you've got to go with the, the knowingness, the feelings, the intuition, the epiphanies, the concepts and knowingness of when you've got those feelings coming through, that's, that can be the, the divine self. It can be other aspects of yourself as well. It can be spirit guides. It could be ETs. It could be fairies, Bigfoot, a number of different things, but that's the thing that we've been shut down from is, and it's a hard component to, to, and what I do with this is try to assist people to break this down. It's not to say you don't have your own thoughts, but that's one of the main mechanisms that contact's happening is through thoughts, feelings, epiphanies, concepts, knowingness. And us as humans in recent times, we're programmed where if you can't see, touch, taste, smell something or get external validation, we tend to doubt it. Mm -hmm. And this is where the more that you play with that, the more that you're going to get hits, the more that you're going to start foretelling stuff because your intuition's right on a lot of things. Especially with women, women are very connected through the feminine because we connect to the spirit through it. So I say to a lot of women, how many times have you knew, some, you knew something was going to happen, but you didn't say something and then it happened? It happens with men as well, don't get me wrong, but women are more in tune. So because they're, they're more in creative thinking, they're more open. And that's how, again, we connect to spirit. And they'll always say, yeah, well, I'm, I've got that, you know, that knowingness that so many times this is going to happen or that happens and then it happens, but I didn't speak up. Why? Because I just thought it was in my imagination. I just thought it was an idea. That's the communication coming through. And the more, again, that you play with that, the more that you can exercise that and strengthen that. It's another sense. That's all it is. Yep. You know, I, I, I've, I've told so many people this. This was taught to me and it, it's helped a lot with knowing intuition. You know, it's that intuition and ego. I always say, you know, like that loving little bastard ego. <laughs> is yeah. what I call it. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about, you know, thoughts coming in, because some people wonder, like, how do I know if it's my thought or someone's else? And so I said, always ask, is this mine? And then snap your fingers. And literally, the very, like, when you snap, that is truth. Outside of the snap is ego. Because you're giving ego once more time to, to question it and to analyze it more. So if you're ever wondering something, just snap your finger. Boom, answer's right there. Because it's, that's our innate knowingness that we have. Yeah, and that's the balance as well. Like you said, you know, you've got the ego aspect and then you've got the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time too, what you feel is an energetic component. And what I mean by that is that we have touch, which is a sensation. Like we, we get a sensation from that, which is one of the five senses. So I say to people, be aware of just energetic sensations. It could be temperature change. It could be goosebumps, hair standing up, an energetic feeling on the body. Um, it can be a number of different things that come through, but what's in effect actually happening, whether you're having physical contact or not, something's light body is overlapping your light body and that's a physical byproduct. And you'll even know that with specific beings, they'll feel a certain way. Some people don't notice it, but when they're with me and I get them to do energy exercise and they can feel it with their hands, we're very sensitive there. So a lot of the time people will start off feeling the energy there, but then they'll start to feel it in other areas and they'll be like, I get it now, I can feel the energy because they're just not acquainted with it. They're, they're not able to sit for five minutes and just be the observer. Mm -hmm. And so it's opening up in different ways that you can even feel the energy when the contact's happening as well. Yep. So you have to lean into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just be open to it. Like I say, it's not bad. It's not uh, like you've got to be discerning. So it's not, you know, opening up to anything and everything, but when you, when you sort of surrender to it at the same time, and again, know your clearing techniques and practices, you've got to surrender in a way that allow your higher self and the experiences to lead you rather than you from the human aspect, try to control it. 
And every now and then the barrier will be pushed, but it's to get you out of your comfort zone. And this is what I say to people is that to thrive and grow, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. There's two things that hold humans back. One's fear of the unknown and the other's fear of security. But if you can surrender and you go with the heart with what feels right, what's awaiting on the other side can be absolutely amazing. So surrendering sometimes and just allowing to go with the flow and just know that as long as it feels right in the heart, it's, it's okay. It's just observing the uncomfortable phase with that and knowing that everything will be all right. And it's very hard for some people. It's been like that for me in the past many years ago, but it's, uh, it's something that takes on a life of its own. And like I say, even with science or investigation, you've got to let the evidence lead you, not the other way around. It's the same with the spiritual experience. Let it lead you. Yep. And now, in, I'm sorry. Oh, and no. in, leading, in leading with the heart and using the heart as your filter, I'm sure some people, there's still a lot of shadow work and old trauma to clear because maybe they're not, you know, at their full potential of their heart. Their heart's still, they have some old stuff they have. They can't, they're missing the connections maybe because they have some old wounds that they're not addressing. I don't know if that resonates. Yeah, but I no, like no, it does. It does. It's, that's where, like, especially with the work I've done over the many years, um, there is a component. This is what I'm down to now, which is self-mastery. The beings aren't to be looked up to. They're not your saviors. We're here. We've come from all that. We've already done all that. We're here to help here. Now, it's amplified for people like us. And I actually, I believe it's amplified for the whole human race. And I'll elaborate. We've got a component that we have our own traumas, wrong conclusions, judgments. Some people have been sexually abused. Some people have been uh, violently abused. It could be verbal abuse in the, in the home upbringing. Um, bullying at school, you know, there's all this crap. We've got stuff there. But what I was shown was that the strongest souls have come down here to help at this time, specifically around the World War II period, to where not only are you going to have those experiences, unfortunately, but you're also breaking down the traumas and wrong conclusions, judgments, everything that's from the ancestors through epigenetics. So not only are you clearing your crap, when I say to people, when you're clearing your crap, not only like when stuff's coming up, is it your stuff? And you'll be able to know when it's yours, but is it your ancestors as well? So it's almost not only have we got a double whammy, it goes throughout the lineage. So you've got all these different things, whether they're traits, whether they're traumas, whatever it is that's stored in it. It's really more bigger than what people think when they've got to clear their stuff. And this is where really working with being the observer and, and what i mean by that there's something that i do every oh, usually five days a week at least where for 40 minutes to an hour i blindfold myself and i earplug myself so what i'm doing is i'm depriving myself of sight and hearing so what's happening i'm cutting a few senses off which is opening up the other senses and all i'm doing is being the observer now i'll i'll give people a tip with the way I operate and probably one of the reasons why I am where I am in terms of experiences is yes, I don't try to control them, but my motivation every single day is to help at least one person, one on one, like help just one person. It's usually more than that. But what can I learn or experience today to be a better person and to be of service? That can initiate, it could be in a, a, a vision. It could be an experience. It could be the beings that teleport or they manifest in front of me. It could be a meeting with myself. You need to work on this, Pete. You need to work on this. And so your stuff's going to come up. And it's a process where over many years for myself, I've gone through a lot of different, um, uh, we could say a colorful past, which a lot of people, I've talked about it before. And I've worked through a lot of things. And so I don't think it's a process of you're going to always be like, you're going to get to a master and everything's done. Somebody that I'm a, a, a big advocate for, I don't know them personally, Joe Dispenza. Great work, amazing human being. I, I, I point a lot of people towards his work. And I heard on their podcast recently, they said, do you still get triggered? I think that was the word that they use or pissed off, excuse me, whatever. And he said, yeah. And they go, what do you do? And he goes, well, I just go into my office for 30 minutes until I can process and work through it. So he, somebody like that that's been helping people for many years now and i can tell you i pretty much know a lot of the biggest names in the community they're still working through self-mastery so the thing is as long as you're being the observer and not going into reactionary mind and this really comes down to even as uh with children with people that look up to you these are these are big things to sort of spark into one's consciousness 
we've, we've got a component here I've spoken about um, before many times. I've shown evidence for it and with the Shiji material where we've got the R part of the brain. Now, the R part of the brain sits right next to the pineal gland. It's where we get triggered. It lights up. But what's happening when they say it's also fight or flight? Well, what I say to that is, well, we had fight or flight before we had the R part of the brain. Before we had it, doesn't make sense. Well, science says, and they can't agree, some say the R part of the brain was introduced 13,000 years ago. Some say it was 100 years ago. My material goes back over 200,000 years, and it was actually put into the earth human by the reptilians. It's a biological implant from my opinion. And what's happening is scientifically that when you get triggered, it lights up. It's grabbing that negative energy and it's feeding not just other entities, but it's feeding artificial intelligence they created to hold a frequency for where they can stay. And that they're staying behind the bail. And this is the fallen ones, which we could say the opposing of the angelic and the Elohim. It's they, they're, they were once the same, but they fell. Now, this is getting a little bit deep, but what I'm saying here is, is that when you get triggered, there's a few things that happen. You can either get over it, you can move on with your day, or you can let it affect your day and you start to go downhill. You can cry, you can get upset. Nothing wrong with crying, of course. You can start to be verbally abusive, you can be aggressive. It's not productive. This is where the... This is what we've really got to push through at the moment. This is where I say, ET contact, all that's fine. This is where it's led me. That we are powerful beings and we've got to reprogram the human race from within to its full potential. So in one way, when we get triggered, you've got two choices. You can either go into observer mind or reactionary mind. Reactionary mind is what a lot of people have programmed through seeing their parents act a certain way, children act a certain way. It could be punching the wall. It could be yelling at somebody, whatever it is. Again, not productive, but the way that you rectify this is the first key is being the observer and acknowledging when you're being triggered. So when you're being triggered, if you can catch yourself, what I say is you're 80% of the way of rectifying it and mastering this. Now, the hard part is, is diverting and changing your thought pattern into how you will react. You get upset, you yell, whatever it is. You don't want to do that anymore. So what you've got to do now is observe, catch yourself, what can I do that's productive with this situation? Can I fix, fix the situation? Can I rectify it? Or I say to some people, even thinking about a rainbow unicorn, it's a bit of a joke, but what I'm saying is when you get triggered, if you can swap it from going down one path that you're used to, which is going to bring you down, depression, anxiety, upset, if you can acknowledge it, change the thought pattern, you scientifically start to create new neuron pathways in the brain to where over time you keep building more steps. And every time you get triggered, it's going to get easier to move on from that scenario. Mm -hmm. So this is the war that we're on right now. And the, it's the war on thought. This is how they've got us. It's not the negative ATs. There's a negative force out there. But they've got a positive, uh, what, what I could say is a positive thing in a way. Not that I condone what the negative do. Don't get me wrong. But it's using the negative of you saying how you react and changing yourself so you raise your frequency and it's like, this happens, all right, you can be negative or you can be the observer, change your thought pattern and rise above it. And what happens is you start to see, this isn't how I want to feel all this down here. I want to feel like this up here. So it, the negative in effect is showing you how you don't want to feel. So you raise above it so it can't affect you. So it's a twofold thing. It's almost like it's backfired introducing that R part of the brain. And this is really where we're at now especially with children showing them to, uh, I could say, think about things in a different way rather than getting upset and responding in certain ways. And of course, we're all going to get upset, but they're the future. They're the future of the human race. In a lot of cases, I'm saying that the, the, the teachers are actually the children, not the parents. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. You know, so that's so a bit of a rant there. I hope that makes sense what I said anyway. Well, now, you know, I want to add on to, to what you were saying is, you know, one thing that, that I personally have learned is that when I am getting into a triggered state is I send it, I send gratitude to it. Thank you. But thank you for this opportunity arising. So now I can look at why am I feeling this way? What in this moment? And I've even done that somewhat with my own kids because if one of their friends is suddenly portrayed them or bullying them, I have taught them say thank you to them because they're showing you their, their true selves. 
thank you for showing yourself to me. Now I can choose what I'm going to do with your truth. And so, you know, that's a way of, of, of reworking that and rewiring. And, and I, I, I love your saying that the, how it's growing new neurons about how you navigate this situation. But, you know, again, this, it was something that my uh, Tajetan showed me um, in regards to, you know, so often people are wanting, you know, to look up and to be there, but his words to me was, we want to be where you are at because your souls are being given so many opportunities of growth right now you know they're just doing the same stuff that you've always done you know or in our other lives we've always done earth is such a learning planet that we are given multiple opportunities to expand and grow so when we are reaching those places of being triggered i love that it is it's growing new neurons and you're, you're again your soul's expanding yeah it, it's just what are you in alignment with a lot of people are, are stuck in a certain situation they're stuck with a, a repeating pattern and again, like I was saying earlier, it's getting out of that comfort zone. It's not going to be comfortable. That's why you're getting out of your comfort zone. It's just, it's a byproduct of it, but it, it pays off and it's an ever going thing. So this is where, for example, I might have somebody come to me with needing assistance with clearing and then they'll come back a few months later and I'm like, have you been doing your clearing? Oh, I do it like once a week. No, no, no. You've got to be catching it daily. I do about a hundred. People go hundred. Well, there's a lot of stuff from the public. There's a lot of hate mail. There's a lot of lovers as well, but there's a lot of thought projection going on at me. So I've got that. Then I've got, you know, I could say covert groups doing things as well as extraterrestrials and, and what I call the lower light doing stuff. So it's something where I'm not saying you've got to do a hundred clearings a day, but I say to people, even if you're doing a, a ritual of it, like in the morning and lunchtime and afternoon, or even just every afternoon you get to the end of the day or you start your day with doing a clearing, start to try and get it part of your program of your daily life to clear energies, observe what's going on. What's my place in this today? Is it my crap? Is it somebody else's? Uh, being the observer with it, it's got to be something that's kept up on a regular basis to keep the energies clear, basically. So it's a bit of a process. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have the same clearing you do every time? Like I know it, James taught us, you know, at he's is at the ranch. Do you do a similar? Um, I've got many techniques, many techniques. I'll do something similar to James. Uh, I sometimes use James's technique. Uh, it's usually probably three big clearings a day that I'll put a lot of energy into it, a lot of time and focus. And then the other ones, they can take a second. They could take up to 10 seconds, 20 seconds. So it's not something where I'm spending copious amounts of time with it. It's just whatever the occasion's calling for with what I'm going through. Yeah. So it's more, it's, See, clearings, what I say to people is clearings aren't just a prayer or doing something. It's freefold. It's using the intention. Words do help because they've got a vibrational wave that comes out that we see with Dr. Emoto's work, which I've presented before, as well as a lot of people have gone on with Dr. Emoto's work that how thoughts affect water and our body's, you know, 70% water as well. So even saying stuff, thinking it, but then also using your imagination, which connects to the mind's eye and you can meet some of these intelligences in your higher self halfway there. Is shifting energies through light, rectifying imbalances, trying to balance the mind, body, spirit complex back out. Because I think even with the spiritual community, people are so spiritual, but in the physical world, they're really lacking. They're lacking because they're up here and they haven't got a balance. So it, they could be clumsy. They could feel lethargic. They might not have any energy. It's trying to keep that balance so you can run at your optimal efficiency in the physical world, which is what we're here for. But to be optimal here, you've got to be balanced out with the mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's really just trying to find ways that you can be balanced. Not all what I say, airy fairy. You know, I, I, I can sound more airy fairy than anyone. But what I say at the same time is I'm keeping it grounded as much as I can and point it out if I'm not, because it's all about boots on the ground here, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, one, th <laughs> one thing that I had to really come in and ground more was when this, um, we call it the blip started happening <laughs> 20 months ago. I, I did, I just went straight up and that's just where I resided. Well, you know, first off, cause I was going there for truth, you know, not looking around me. But it is, I think so much of us who are more multidimensional, more spiritual, it, it is our tendency to just, I call it bounce. I just bounce out. Like I'm just going to bounce and be up here and I don't want to experience this stuff down here. Um, but it is, you're, you're right. It is finding that balance because we did choose to be here boots on ground for this. 
Definitely. And look, don't get me wrong. There's times that you do need to bounce, but it's not doing it 24 seven. It's like, <laughs> it's like putting off on the, on the side you keep shifting. There's, there's a, let's say there's a situation you've got to deal with, but you're almost like this to it. If I don't acknowledge it yet, or if I don't face it yet, it doesn't exist, but eventually it's going to come creeping around and it's going to be in your face. So it's trying to, yeah, it's a balancing act. That's what it is. Everything's a balancing act. Whether it's, you know, our, our personal lives, children, partners, family, you time with yourself, uh, hobbies, exercises, trying to have a balance of everything. What, what we eat, what we do is, it's really a balancing act. And uh, I think once you find that sweet spot with it, things run a lot better. We're a lot more efficient. We're a lot more productive. We're a lot more happy. Yeah. So it, the balancing act is a very much a key to all this. Absolutely. What would you, what would be some of your advice to be, because, you know, this is a common thing that we're hearing is, you know, a lot of the kids, they are extremely empathic. Um, and the, the adults are as well. And it's been really ramped up, even with all of the solar flares that have been, mm -hmm. oh my good Lord, just they mm -hmm. pumping out tsunamis from the sun. You know, what's just something that we can do or advice that you would offer for the kids and the parents to go through this, this field, this energetic field that we're in, because so many of us are, are antennas, you know, for a reason to yeah. feel this collective. Well, what I'll say is I'm not an expert on this and I don't think anyone is. Some people might be like, well, but I don't think any, I think there's no manual to this and we're all in this together. That's where we've got to bounce off of each other and learn from each other. And that's how we get through this. Yeah. There is a component too that you can't, be the protector in some aspects as well. There's stuff where kids, is, what I'll give you as an example is this. A child's got to learn to ride a bike, a push bike. Mm -hmm. Now it starts out with training wheels. It's doing good, all right? Time to pull off the training wheels, but parents are going to be hesitant. They're going to stay. They're going to crush that bike. They're going to skim their knee. They're going to hurt their elbow. Something is going to happen. But the thing is, it's got to go through the stage. Now you've got to pull the training wheels off. So there's going to be stuff that's going to happen, but it's got to go through that. Just realize that it's capable of riding a bike without training wheels. Do you understand the analogy here? It's like, they've got to go through it. You're going to sit back. You're going to be there for them to come running to and to support them and hug them, but they've got to go through some stuff. Mm -hmm. This is where no matter what children can't be fully, we could say wrapped in bubble wrap and protected from everything because something could happen to you and you're not going to be around mm -hmm. some they're going to be in a situation at school that mum's not there or the dad's not there and somebody's going to say some crap to them or do something that a bully's going to do they've got to now at the same time it's not saying these things are okay don't get me wrong but it's preparing the child to be able to deal with it through tips and tools is, is going to help it so it's something where i think with children they're in their head a lot as well Yes, we could say, unfortunately, with some just constantly on video games, they need something to do for the mind and the body at the same time. Well, they're doing this with their hands or whatever, and their mind's active. This is why I think things regularly that are productive, that are puzzles, problem solving, it could be giving them something and go undo this mechanical thing and put it back together. They need active stuff. And I think that helps with their mind, body, spirit connection. But even just little imaginary exercises of, all right, before we go into the shopping centre today, and this is where I'll talk about with clearings, you could drive through a neighbourhood where, I hate to say it, there might have been a rape or a drug OD or a murder happened. Now, even though that that's happened and you're not there during the process of it, you driving through that area can pick up thought forms from the original uh, residual energy that's there. So you might even start to feel upset, not even know what it's about, but something happened there. This happens with everyone every day. There's something that they might drive through or go through that there's just thought forms coming on that the thought forms are being projected. Going to the shopping mall, children are very empathic. So there's a lot of sort of chaotic energy. There's, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of what I say negative energy, just like going to a casino or uh, a music festival. It might be uh, drug energy. It could be sexual energy. It could be just negative, dark energy. These things are harvested at these types of places. I show in presentations because they're, they're actually uh, a lot of food courts like domes are harvesting that energy and projecting it up to the AI, very much how the pyramids and other things have worked. 
So even visualizing that you're in a ball of light, when we get out of the car or when you leave the home, you're in your ball of light. Just imagine you're in a ball of light. Imagination is creation. We can actually levitate, project things, manifest things once you know your consciousness, but even just imagining it working out for let's say using your childlike mind, these things can be effective. You're in your, even say, get in your armor of light. So they might think about this, you know, armor that's like a night suit, but it's like created from structure from light. So little things like that can be a start to it. But then it gets to when they're getting triggered, trying to show them a way that, again, I'm not a professional at, but maybe trying to change the thought. Not, not saying that what happened to them is okay, but trying to calm down and get them to change their thought process of how to handle the situation, observe a situation. Of course, they might cry, kick things. That's children. They're going to be like that. But it's very hard that I can tell you from experience that I think, in my opinion, I know why children or babies cry when they're born. And what it was, was I, I've only had three regressions and I didn't even need them. Uh, the first one, probably with Mary, I did because I was very frustrated with a missing time experience. And then the beings jumped in me. I convulsed for five minutes and all of a sudden, I can't even watch it really because it's not me speaking through my body and there was a lot of crazy stuff that happened. But, but the third time, the second and third time, it was more trying to talk to the beings to get information that I wasn't getting at the time. And I, I knew it all, what they said anyway. But on the third time, the last time I was hypnotised, I came back to the body that hard that I cried for about 45 minutes straight and everyone's trying to get something out of me. And they're like, what are you crying for? And when I could get it out, I said, I know why babies cry now. And they said, why? And I said, cause it's so frigging heavy here. It's like, I've, it's like I literally went from us here and I jumped into my body, which was living in water. And it was like how heavy water was. And so those young souls are still trying to adjust believe it or not, after years of being here and a lot of children, and we see this with star seeds, but you're seeing it with so many children now, they feel like the black sheep. They look at things and go, things could be done so much better. Why do people treat each other that way? They're looking at things that are logical that we know isn't right going on, asking why is this happening, yet no one's doing anything about it. And this is where the kids are the future in that way that go it's like each child has a potential to create a huge change in this world that's going to have a ricochet effect around the planet that enough of them doing it including us doing it now it's going to take us to that bigger and brighter future and that better day so i think it's trying to find what works for the children what empowers them to empower themselves but also using your imagination or getting them to use their imagination to work on things and not just see that what we're seeing here is it. Again, like I say, we can only see a fraction of 0.005% of physical matter, which is a very slim part of it, which is the visible light spectrum. That's all we're seeing scientifically. We've got our senses, we've got our smells, our taste, we can hear things, touch, but we've also got other senses, which is emotions and feelings, thoughts, and the mind's eye. And the more that I think children explore those things in a way that's not looked down upon this is where we start stepping back into our true original state that we were thousands of years ago what the human is capable of is absolutely unbelievable but it's going to be through the children that we get to that next level and that's where it's again not leading them on everything's like i'm like going get your crystals make a crystal thing if they want to do that cool but what i say is don't you as a parent get them to do that if they want to do that, you explore that. If they want to talk about ETs, let them talk to you. You don't talk to them or lead them on. What do they know? Because that's what they need. They need somebody to listen, not to tell them what's going on, what the parent theorizes is going on, because the kids are more open than the parent. So it's, it's, it's not right anyway. But what I'm saying is I'm trying to show some ideas and I guess say some stuff to look at things from different avenues that pe the parents haven't seen, because sometimes I have found the parents leading on the parent going on about spiritual stuff all the time is actually being harmful for the kid because what's happening, that's not that child on a soul level. If they want to talk about ETs, they'll be talking about it. Don't you shove it down their throat. There's, there's a, there's a balancing act here. It's like, um, it's like parents forcing, I want my kid to be the best tennis player on the planet. The kid doesn't want to play tennis, but yet you got them at tennis lessons. They're miserable. They want to be playing a violin or a guitar. That's what they'd rather be doing as an example. 
and think about how detrimental that is. So this is where some parents don't want to hear what I've got to say that are in the spiritual community because I say that and I will not tell any parent how to raise it. I'm trying to just give some advice and out of the box thinking here. Being somebody that went through this and I had no help because my parents were shut off from this. I love my parents, great parents. They've seen all this now. So they know it's real. Thank God it's, it's a great relationship. But it, there is a fine line between... But what I'm saying, you leading the child on and opening them up to this in a way that's not beneficial for them because it might not be their soul journey. And I'll say this. Some people don't need to know what we're talking about right now. It's not out of ignorance. It's not out of me being controlling. It's not out of ego, anything like that. What this is, as I say to some people, if people or the, those that you know would give the shirt off their back to help a fellow human, that's being a good person. That's all we need is good people. If they're meant to open up to the stuff that we're talking about, when and if the time that that comes, fine. But this is where I thought years ago when I was on television here, it was like Good Morning America, but Australia's version of it. A lot of crap talking about astronauts and politicians and military that had experiences because I knew they weren't going to believe me. They, they were treating me like my contact was like an imaginary friend. It hurt. Everywhere I went, I could see this in windows when I'm walking down the street. And it's not like that now with my hometown. But why I'm saying this is I look back in a short period and I had this epiphany one day that was no wonder they think I'm nuts. If they're not open-minded or experience something and their main form of information is the mainstream news, I'm going to look nuts to them. So at that time, I backed right off. But more people started to come to me because they now had found somebody through that, that mainstream format you're not crazy. I need somebody to talk to. And they started coming to me. So what I'm saying is I was once trying to push disclosure on to humanity. Now I don't care. It's going to happen no matter what. And it's, and even the Ascension process isn't for everyone. The, the Ascension process, there is going to a new earth. There's going to another dimension. There's obtaining the rainbow light body, but we we're, we're forgetting about the earthly Ascension process of just raising our frequency in the earthly experience. And that's what we need to be focused on. Now we've already done all that. We're here to help others go through their Ascension process. And that's the hard thing now. And that's what the children are here for as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Those, those who are meant to hear the call will. And yeah. Uh, so it's a balancing act. Yeah. That's what I say. Like um, I, some of the children I've met, even through Mary Rodwell, blow my mind they make what i'm going through pale in comparison to them the knowledge the wisdom and and seeing the parents deal with it they've had some experiences but like i said they're not leading on or anything and yet you're talking to this child and you, you're literally talking to an et they're highly intelligent you could go and look up the scientific facts that they're saying and you're like how the hell do they know all this and you meet the parent and you know that the parent's not sitting there talking about this projecting it onto them. I know that the child themselves have experienced this and that's their knowledge. And that's when you're like really blown, blown aback. Or well, they're speaking a certain language or um, they're able to do certain like abilities. I've seen abilities that I can't really speak about, but you think about levitation or like telekinesis. They've done some crazy stuff in front of me. I've done some of it too, but they're at a level that again, it's child's play to them. And they're so young and they're stepping into here and it's like, we've got masters among us right now. Mm -hmm. yeah yep and you know in in regards to you know your children it, it is just because they have they're tuned in and they have these abilities doesn't mean that they're going to do anything with them necessarily in the way that you might want them to you know my my oldest daughter she came in with incredible abilities wide awake she didn't like it and, you yeah. know, and, and she gained me and she said, I don't want this anymore. And I told her, I said, you have free will. If yes. you don't want this, you don't have to do anything with it. Um, so she shut herself completely down. You know, it was an active choice of hers and it was, a, it caused her massive migraine headaches and, you know, and she suffered physically for that for a while, but she didn't want it. She made that choice and, you know, and, and one of her, I did a session was talking with her higher self. She's just here to experience. She's just here to be of light and to experience. And, you know, so whether she opens back up and uses any of those abilities, that's on her. It's, you know, it's her choice to have it. And but exactly. That could happen. 
she she might get older and it might get to the twenties or thirties and just bang, it's just it's back on. You know, game on. It might not, and it's cool either way. That's the that's the thing, and it can be. Um, like I find that some parents they they're almost wanting these abilities to be like a show pony, like a circus act, and it's like there's got to be reasons for using this, and it's up to the child how and. And then also that the child will know that there's ramifications for doing certain things as well. It could be a whole host of different things. So it's, it's again, bringing it back to them and what they feel. And that's where it, it can be hard. I've had to shut myself off a lot. I've got to shut myself off a lot every day so I can get some silence. So I can get some seclusion a bit because I could be open multidimensionally all the time, but I prefer to do it uh, when it's called upon and when it's needed. Otherwise, I shut myself down and then if it's if it's urgent they will pop in and we will have a visit what have you but it is a balancing act with that as well because you can't be just 24 go live breathe extraterrestrial stuff and spiritual stuff you've got to be balancing it all out mm -hmm. yep absolutely yep well peter thank you so much um i appreciate you coming on i you have covered just a breath of knowledge um Thank you so much. Um, for all of our audience, please go and check out Multidimensional. Peter, what's another way that people can contact you? Uh, they can go to petermaxwellsluttery.com, uh, ecdstray.org, or jiasanctuary.com as well. So that's the, the sanctuary that I've got here. Um, yeah, and they can get links to social media, the new movie, and other things as well. But uh, ladies, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure talking with you, and it's uh, been great. Yes. Such an honor and such a treat. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Yes. No, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And I, you know, I, I look forward to uh, our world opening back up so we can come to Australia and visit, visit your sanctuary. Yeah, and likewise, I can't wait to get back to America and, and see some of America again and get back up to the ranch. And yeah, it's uh, been hard for everyone. So hopefully those borders all shut down very soon. <laughs> Yes, we're ready for it. Well, everyone at home, we will put all of Peter's links in the description. And again, Pete, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate and it. Check out Multidimensional and with your kids. Yes, I got it on right. iTunes. Where else can they find it? I got mine on iTunes. Where all can we get? I did yeah. Amazon. I might yeah, there's Amazon. iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, uh, Vimeo, Vu. I think it's called Voodoo and Microsoft, mm -hmm. but it's also rolling out through many other platforms that's the main ones that it's on at the moment so it's still rolling out in some countries i think you'll be able to get it in any country if you find the right format but it's still rolling out so yeah for those that can't see it at the moment in their area keep an eye out because it will be available shortly perfect and and you know and for all the parents at home again i i watched with my 10 year old she was captivated the entire time she loved it so <laughs> it's right. like family friendly wonderful delivery it is mm -hmm. it thank, was. You. It was great. thank you thank you peter thank you so much thank you so much <laughs>